All right, guys, welcome to the Ravid Show, and we have our special, special guest. Very excited to have him here on the Ravid Show. He is Denise Rothman. You might uh, see a flow of super energy today. That is for sure. I can bet. Uh, Dennis is the author of uh, multiple books. Uh, he has come up with this new book uh, that you can see on my uh, branding. Okay, this said, uh, Transformers for NLP. Uh, so we'll be talking about that. And also everyone has a chance to win uh, Denise's book today. Don't forget to ask some amazing questions. Uh, Denise is an uh, artificial intelligence specialist, author, speaker, instructor. Uh, he has his own consultancy and all that I can talk. But uh, without uh, any more time, I would like to just get uh, Denise. Hi, Denise. Welcome to The Rabbit Show. How are you? Hi, Rabbit. <laughs> <I'm fine. laughs> Such a pleasure to have you. And uh, first of all, congratulations on your new book. Uh, I can see it's uh, doing fantastic. Uh, and it's the first book on Transformers. We'll be obviously touching base on the book and we'll be letting uh, audience know. And I was just telling them that they have a chance to win two books today by asking some amazing questions. So uh, folks can actually ask some amazing questions. We are waiting here. Matthew is already here. Hey, Matthew. Um, uh, thanks. So uh, we'll be with, uh, how can we, how should we start with your introduction? We want to know more about you, Denise. Well, uh, I started um, artificial intelligence uh, back in the 1980s. Yeah. I registered a word to vector patent, a word piece uh, patent in 1982. In mm. 1986, 1987, uh, I registered um, and then uh, a chatbot patent and mm. I deployed it uh, in some corporations. And then I went into aerospace and I've been doing artificial intelligence ever since. And uh, I saw the, to come to our subject, I saw the birth of uh, recurrent neural networks in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. RNNs is the 80s, or in 1920, 2020, sorry, that's 40 years later. So it's, yeah. they're, they're, they're obsolete now. That's, that's where the reviewers uh, should ask questions because uh, the transformer model <laughs> has really taken taken it apart. So I worked for many co corporations around the world. I yeah. used to travel uh, weeks on end everywhere, getting into the plane, getting off the plane. Uh, yeah. And I've seen about every aspect of uh, artificial intelligence. And my culture is wow. multi-country. I was born in Germany. Uh, my father was Russian than American. My mother was Italian than yeah. American. Uh, I live in France. I, li I worked in the States. Uh, so I'm in a, it helps a lot in artificial intelligence to be multicultural. You can't oh, be. Yes, uh, definitely. You can't be like <laughs> this. And, you know. Uh, okay. So I and I have connections from everywhere in the world from uh, California oh. to Iran uh, to Palestine to. Israel, India, China, any every country, even Lesotho in Africa, everywhere. Wow, <laughs> you've I covered the globe. Sure, I make sure that every country is represented in my connections and every mm -hmm. religion, every way of thinking. That's awesome. the only way to we go have... forward. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, you have uh, a, a huge, huge experience. That's what I can say. And yes, we have some folks who are joining in. We have uh, Tarek who's joined us. Hey, Tarek. Yes, uh, Vitlana is here. Uh, thanks for bringing this book to my attention. Always looking for new coverage in NLP. It's more than a new coverage. It's uh, it's it's, uh -huh. it's really taking RNNs and STLMs off the off the map. Mm -hmm. I, and we can go into that when you want. Yeah, definitely. We'll be touching base on all all of those. Uh, but yes, uh, you know, uh, we've been always talking, Denise. In uh, you know, we've been one quick question from my end, then I'll be taking questions from the folks out there. Uh, since data science is uh, said to be the sexiest job of twenty first century, what what are your thoughts about it? I always wanted to ask you, but uh, now is the time, I guess. Okay, so. Uh... We're, we're right here in a crossroad. I mean, mm -hmm. up, up to up to I would say mid 2020, people could mm -hmm. learn artificial intelligence and they could implement artificial intelligence. 
right yeah. now while I'm speaking, it's going to happen in the next few months or maybe one or two years. 90% yeah. of people that are in artificial intelligence will not be able to implement their own solutions anymore. They will rely mm -hmm. on Google, Amazon, Microsoft to yeah. get to get the algorithms and run them on cloud uh, servers. That that's that is mm -hmm. the big change. Going from creating algorithms and today being a scientist, data scientist will be more in creating pipelines for existing algorithms. But the person okay. won't be able to go create the algorithms. Not after the transformer. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly why you mentioned it's got it will be absolute. So, uh, but yeah, we have some interesting comments. I would uh, like to take it. Hi from UK. Jeremy is here. Uh, yeah, uh, Jeremy so Revenel, yes. Yes, uh, Kushal is here. Uh, we had a very funny comment from uh, Jeremy. <laughs> Denise, you are the Pope of AI. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, I am not a Pope. Yeah. <laughs> the Pope is above. The, the Pope is is interested in more in more human things than artificial intelligence. Yeah. Uh, talking of transformers, actually, uh, but Lena had a question. Can you explain what transformers are? For yeah, that, that's, that, that, that's, the big, that's the big problem I see because they're yeah, coming exactly. in so fast and so hard uh, that no one's realizing that they're taking it. It's like this new, the new strains of viruses, you know, in COVID, we hear the UK in the South, and we know that they'll take over. Well, transformers are taking over so fast, but in low noise. Yeah. So let's see where the difference is, okay? You have one big difference is in a recurrent neural network, you're going to analyze a sequence, okay? Mm -hmm. But as you analyze it, you have a backpack. You're, you're going to B, and at B, you have to remember what you did at A. At C, you have to remember what you did at B and C. At D, you have to remember, you keep going back. That's why it's called recurrent. So you keep going back and back and back. And at one point, you're limited because you're, you, you're right. limited. It's trying, it's, it's like, let's suppose I play a game and I ask you to remember words, uh, coffee, tea, cake, uh, books. At, at what point you just say, Dennis, stop. I can't remember all those words. What are you, what are you trying exactly. to do? That's a recurrent neural network. Okay. Uh-huh. Transformer comes along and says, forget about that. We're not going to remember anything. We don't need, we don't, we're, we're, we're going to go into unlimited sequences and we're going to look at the, at the relation between one word and another, no matter how far it is from the other one. Like take a simple mm -hmm. sentence. You say, let's take a simple sentence. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm because the chair was right in the middle of the room and the cat was sitting on it. What does it relate to? It, it, it was mm -hmm. very interesting because the chair was in the middle of the room and the cat was sitting on it. Okay, that's a mm -hmm. Winifred test. Now, mm -hmm. the current neural networks can't do that if the sequence is very long. Okay, that's, so that's one big difference. The mm -hmm. second difference is, the second difference is, Recurrent neural networks have problems with the position of the word. Since they learn mm -hmm. the cat is there, well, they're, they're having all these positions they're trying to remember. Right. Said, forget about it. We're going to okay. create an algorithm that will find the position and add it to the input. Now, mm -hmm. the big, big difference in architecture recurrent neural networks are deep learning networks. So they just go layer, 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 layer. And all these layers are different. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like if you take a Lego box, you take a box mm -hmm. of Legos, and all the, all the Lego pieces are a different size. Uh, try to build a wall. Try to build a wall with Lego pieces of all different sizes. It happened to us when we were children. We tried to go high, but then we didn't have the pieces anymore. Transformers... Mm -hmm are all built in identical blocks. So you can add them, put them together, add some more. And what can you do with these blocks? Then you can separate them into many parts and run them in parallel on your machine. Wow. You can't do that with a recurrent neural network. You And then when you're finished, you put it all together. So it gives all these pers 
remember when in the introduction I say I have a multicultural uh, view. I was mm -hmm. born in Germany, it, and so yeah. I have exactly. Russian, American, German, Italian, French vision mm -hmm. perspective. Well, that's a transformer. The transformer does, divides what it's looking at into like hey. di eight different blocks, and it will run it separately and get eight different perspectives of the same word in the sentence. And then it'll go and do this up to 96 times in some of the models. So you have this Lego box that you can build the way you want. And then you have this intelligence in it where it says, oh, mm -hmm. let's be careful. I'm going to take some of the information and I'll keep it all the time to make sure we don't get yeah. lost. I could go on for an hour. The power of it is you can you can see all this in the book, even starting chapter one. The power of it really wipes everything we know off the map in uh, artificial intelligence in uh, NLP. And you can apply these sequences to many, many other subjects. Right. This is, I think you've just explained it so well. We already have comments saying uh, great explanation. Obviously, now be uh, sitting here. Now I know what Transformers is and about. Obviously, we I I've had your book and all of those things. People want your book, Denise, out <laughs> there. Uh, Andrew Jones, uh, Data Science Infinity, is the guy. Uh, he he's already ordered your book. It seems. And uh, if for everyone who's not following Denise, uh, Andrew, uh, he's doing some great strides. So do not uh, forget to follow him. Uh, we have an uh, interesting question from Manpreet. I was just looking at that. Uh, um, Manpreet Budraja. Denise Rotman, why did you choose to write on Transformers only? What are your thoughts uh, on BERT and its adaptation? Okay, so now, uh, Manpreet, you have answered, you have asked a very, very important question. Okay, mm. first of all, you have to understand that there is an invisible person in this meeting called Tushar Gupta. At PAC. Oh, yes. <laughs> Gupta is the producer of the book. He's the visionary, not me. I'm the author. So remember, <laughs> Gupta, he's the guy. And he spends his time looking at the future. And what, what, what happens is he says, Google came up with the transformer. So there's a transformer. But in my book, I speak about birds. And why do mm -hmm. I speak about it, Manpreet? Because the original transformer has an encoder so it will take mm -hmm. your input it will convert it into numbers then it will do these positioning calculations i told you the relations between the word and it'll build up and build up and build up and build up and then in the original transformer then you send some of this information to the decoder because then you're going to ask this decoder to give you an answer. Say, it's nice, you've been learning for two hours, but tell me something. Uh, if I say I go to, what happens after? I go to the market, I go to I go to school. So there's a decoder. So now you have these Lego blocks, you decode and you encode and you decode. That's normal, you know, like you convert your name. I'll convert yeah. rabbit, rabbit, rabbit into number five. And then after I have to put it back into a word, I have to decode it. Now, Mempreed, that's so in chapter one, I explain transformers, but in chapter two, I go to Bert. And uh, in chapter three, I go to Roberta. And then in chapter mm -hmm. four, I give all the tasks. Then chapter five, I go to a translator. Chapter six, I explain the T5 model. In chapter six, the G2, GPT3 models. So in the book, you'll have all these models. I even go in the last chapter, the last part, I even so would. Uh, uh, a, a debert is so and a reformers so in the book you'll have all the models all the main models not so the transformer is the name it's like saying i want a car then what brand do i want do i want a ford do i want uh, a, a renault what what a mercedes so transformer right. is the, the the general name and then you have all these names so in the book you have Bert, and you have even distilled Bert, Roberta, uh, uh, no problem. Wow. Awesome. I think, yeah, that definitely answers my Pete's question. Thanks, Denise, for the, you know, the complete, uh, you know, how you've just gone into the book. Uh, 
talking about book, there was an interesting question from Matthew Ambrick. Uh, Dennis, what are the recommended prerequisites for learning about transformers, the math, the Python abilities, and libraries? Okay, now, 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 Matthew, now you have a. That's a tough question because first of <laughs> all, first of all, let's take it the other way around. I mm -hmm. would say the most important thing to understand is uh, that transformers are invisible to us. They're hidden in the social mm -hmm. network, no, social uh, media networks. They're, 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 they're hidden. So people say, oh, I'm going to do a Turing test and compare. Well, you can't. They're invisible. You don't know what's going on. So mm -hmm. I would say the first thing you want to do is, for example, to go on YouTube and try to figure out why it's suggesting another video. You watch a video and you say, why is it giving me this other video? I'll, I'll explain a bit later, later in another question. I'll stick to the abilities, but I'll tell you what's happening. Yeah. So I would say math, the, the math in here goes back to, I would say, just matrix multiplication. The whole thing is based on matrix multiplication in, in the attention head. Mm -hmm. So the problem there is to understand the concepts, not the math. The math is, is you just have to review math, uh, a, a matrix, uh, matrix multiplication, and then you have to just understand how it puts these things together. It takes the input, it multiplies it by a query, that a query uh, weights. Wait. You have to understand just the relationship. So math, I would say, with basic AI math, you're okay. Mm -hmm. But... You have to know a lot about. You have to know about natural language processing. You have to know what what a task is. Like, uh, what is uh, a Winograd? Uh, what is uh, what is a commitment bank? Uh, what is, you, these are things you know when you're doing that because you have all these exercises, right? So then, mm -hmm. and then uh, a Python abilities. I would say intermediate. Well, you. Now there are two problems to that, Matthew. There's one problem is I'm gonna I'm gonna disappoint many people, but the real transformers are hidden from us. I told you they're in invisible. You can't access GPT-3. You know what's gonna happen? There's gonna be GTP4 in a few months. It's gonna be incredibly powerful, but you won't be able to find it on GitHub. You'll have to rent it on Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. So what's gonna happen is the big, big models are gonna be rented. So I would say you do have to have some Python abilities to debug what they left. They left, but if you go through the book, normally the the programs work, and with some basic Python, you can understand the concepts enough to implement what you find. And uh, I would say the libraries. I'm using Google Collaboratory, so there's nothing you have to worry about. If you're using the notebooks in the book, they, it, you, it just pips everything itself. It's just yep. automatic. So I would say uh, the will to learn is the main ability, the will to learn. <laughs> and if you have problems, you ask me questions. I answer every single question people ask me on LinkedIn. So I'm there if you awesome. need me. Awesome. I'm sure it answers Matthew's question. I, I, spend an hour a day, I spend at least an hour a day answering questions on LinkedIn. <laughs> That's awesome, uh, Denise. Uh, talking about questions, we have another question about the development from Andrew Jones. Uh, what do you think is the next in terms of the development in the areas of transformers? Like you say, there might be a GPT-4. What could be so, something different that you, you Andrew, can explain? Andrew, now, now is the time to fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> take, off, take off is coming. I'd say, I don't know if it's in one or two months or a year or two, but takeoff is coming along. It's the recommender. What does the recommender do? You mm -hmm. first have to master the book, right? And once you master the book, what's going to happen, Andrew, is what's, I'll tell you, I'll give you a very simple example. Let's go back to YouTube. Yep. I'm, I'm Google, okay? I can be Alibaba, Amazon, Facebook. I'm just, I'm just speaking about Google because Google invented the transformers, so it's normal that we should, you know, speak about them. But uh, right. so you're on YouTube, right? And YouTube knows who you are. It has your profile, your age. Even if you didn't give it, it'll find your age by the videos you're looking at. So if you're looking at videos for 15 year olds, you're gonna be, they'll find your age. They'll find your age, they'll find your orientations, they'll find everything through the features. 
Now that's classical NLP that you can find uh, on Netflix with uh, restricted Boltzmann machines in my first book, Artificial Intelligence by Example, Chapter 14. You have the algorithms that do that. So once you have that, I have your full profile. And now I have your sequences. How long did you click here? How long did you watch the video? Which one did you like? Which one did you subscribe to? Where, where did you go next? So now I have a sequence of your behavior and I have, a, I have your profile. Those are two different mm -hmm. things from the transformer. So now I have the sequence of what? Of billions of people when I take it through Facebook and everything. And billions per day, not billions per year. No, billions per day. So now I have these supercomputers running billions of sequences of what we're doing per day with the profiles. So the, what does the transformer do? It takes what I explained before. You have your encoder and your decoder or only your encoder or your decoder. But on the side here, you have all this information on your profile that's coming up. And it comes and it adds it to your sequence. So now it's, ah, rabbit is that age. Okay. And he likes to look what's going on in machine learning. Okay. So he's going to click. He's going to click here. I know where you're going to click. Since I know where you're going to click, I know which advertisement I'm going to put in the YouTube video. Because you might notice that the videos are becoming more and more and more precise. The more you look at YouTube, the more the video, the advertisements are precise. So mm -hmm. I would say prediction, behavior prediction, sequence prediction, Andrew, and it's invisible. You won't see it. You won't have, that's why I'm saying people are worrying about the Turing test. Well, I wouldn't worry about it because you don't know what's going on inside all of those algorithms that are suggesting all these things to us. And the last thing in this prediction is I can predict something you want to see, but I can predict something maybe one inch from what you don't want to see, but where I want you to go. That's right. where the transformers are going. They're going very, very fast and far very relevant uh, you know uh, Denise, when you were talking about this i could just relate it to one uh, obviously documentary that is the social dilemma where I, where i was you know uh, we were earlier spoke also about it that this is what uh, uh, about the algorithms how they push uh, you know even the notifications and they have your behavioral patterns and all of those things uh, i can just imagine uh, what you're saying is so true about yeah but you know, we talked about that so let's go back to the social dilemma the documentary yeah. on Netflix. Okay. Yeah. I would say that mathematically, mathematically, it's true. Mm -hmm. But the people there are depressed. They're, they're, they're in a deep mm -hmm. depression. Because uh, think about it. I, I'm going on YouTube. And, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like yesterday, I was interested uh, in um, some machines. And I was looking at these machines. And uh, I was looking at the Sterling machine. And I want a video. So what does YouTube do? It says, oh, Dennis, you like this machine. So you just watched the video and you didn't stay too long on it. Let me suggest this other one that's good for you. So what I'm saying is we're not children. Social Dilemma treats us as if we were little stupid children and we mm. don't know what we're doing. So we're being manipulated. So why do, why do you eat chocolate? I mean, you can, you can go to a supermarket and, and, and buy 50 bars of chocolate. What can stop you when I'm on YouTube? Well, sometimes I just stop and then I just read a book. So we're adults. So the, the adult thing is not to try to change the algorithms, is to try True. to tell people, why don't you think? Why don't you just mm -hmm. turn your little mobile off and go for a walk? So I would say I'm talking to adults. And the social right. dilemma is talking to adult children, people that don't know how to think. But they know how to think because they're millionaires that created all that. So what I was saying here is I'm tired of billionaires treating me like a child and telling mm -hmm. me what I have to do. If I don't want to watch something, I won't watch it. Okay. Hey, hey, that's so true. I actually, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense when I go back and, you know, think about it and how it has, uh, how that documentary has actually put down. So, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So you you can, from... let, me, let me give you an example. I have, yeah. I have, I have, I have, uh, I have a grandchild, okay? Hey, and he's hey. 11 years old and he has a mobile telephone and he's a geek. 
He's been yeah. developing next to me in Python since he was five years old, and he's reading yeah. the books. He takes the books and he takes all the programs and he runs them. But then when he mm -hmm. goes to school, he notices that many other children are watching things they're not supposed to watch on their mobile. And he comes back home and he says, I was in school and I don't understand why they're doing that. That's mm -hmm. education. Okay, what are the, where are the parents? Okay, the children <laughs> are on their mobile, but where are the parents? Does the father say, you know, I want to talk to you. Let's go for a walk. Let's, let's do some sports together. Uh, right. th th there's something called parents, you know. And I, and I don't need some high-tech billionaires in California to take over my children with all sorts of things. Parents are there for that, right. education. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, talking about that, uh, we had a question from YouTube uh, from Ku. Okay, hi Ku. Uh, what is the possible ethical issues we might encounter while implementing Transformers? Interesting. You have tremendous ethical issues. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're going to have <laughs> tremendous ethical issues. And if you want to, to solve them, then you're going to have to go get my other book on explainable AI. The, 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 the ethical issues are tremendous. But Ping, let me tell you something. It goes back to what I'm saying. Like if you take uh, my book on explainable AI, yeah. you will because I have three, three books, the artificial intelligence and the explainable AI. In chapters five or six of explainable AI, Ping, it depends how you're implementing transformers. For example, in my data sets, I systematically take all the ethnical data out. I don't want to know if a person is brown, green, blue, if he came from Mars, from South Africa. I don't even, I don't even care where he came from. I want to know who he is. So you have to be ethical. So the ethical right. issues you're encountering is, no, sir, I'm not gonna do that because I don't agree with mm -hmm. the data that you're, you're using for this. So I'm out of your project. And if you're in artificial intelligence right now, you can find another job. So you don't have to work for people that are not ethical. So mm -hmm. I take, for example, I take all ethnical data out and I just leave, for example, the level of education and the age. For example, I take anything, ex for, if you want to predict income, I say, how many years of college? If someone did, went to school for 15 years and six years mm -hmm. of college, and is 30 years old, this person on average will earn more than a person that's 20 years old and has just got just doesn't even have a high school education. So you don't need race, ethical, really. No, you don't need all that. So ping the thing is data. You control the data, you filter the data, and you refuse anything that you find offensive. It's very simple. It's like what I was saying. You don't want to watch YouTube, stop watching it. Okay, you don't right. want ethical solutions, filter the data in your pipeline. Yeah, makes sense to me. Yes. So, uh, Dennis, we have another interesting question from Saima. Uh, uh, what is your opinion about using transformers for tasks other than NLP, like in computer vision? Well, transformers are coming uh, full speed into computer vision. Okay, mm -hmm. so Saima, you want to be careful. So transformers are coming at full speed. They're like dragsters. They're coming in at yeah. full speed. But you might want to test both. You'll easily find computer vision uh, transformers, but you need to compare them on to deep learning uh, networks, deep learning CNNs, uh, mm -hmm. all, 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 all of these covenets, all of these. Yeah. You need to compare. You don't want to trust when you're, when you're going in, in computer vision, you don't, now that it's even more complex than that. First of all, to do good computer vision, you hardly need artificial intelligence, okay? You can do a lot of things with basic old time filters. If you want to read license plates, recognize faces, you can do it with some old time algorithms. If you need artificial intelligence, first you go into machine learning. Can you do it with k-means clustering and stuff like that? Then you go into deep learning and once you're into deep learning, you want to you don't trust anyone. You want to run a transformer model against a CNN or a Covnet. Why? Because you might have a bad transformer model and a good CNN model, or you might have a bad CNN model and a good transformer model. You just have to test. Mm -hmm. So I would say yes, do it, but but don't trust anyone. Test the results. Awesome. Another one uh, that 
uh, obviously we were talking about your book uh, someone says i don't know linkedin user you can mention your name denise your xai book is truly a masterpiece it blew my hair, mind when i read it thanks for writing such a masterpiece and uh okay, okay. i think so it's true really, no, uh, there's a minute for the linkedin user what i want to you know want to show my hair and all that and I, let me pose okay <laughs> okay I, I accepted the compliment <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Denise. Uh, we have a, a comment from Robert. I would stop watching YouTube. Thank you very much, Robert. <laughs> Please stay tuned on the Robert show, definitely. Don't go away. <laughs> uh, okay, so LinkedIn user again. Uh, what are your views about differential privacy? Okay. What do you mean by differential privacy? <laughs> privacy. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm just explain. Wondering. User. Maybe user can you describe because i know different I, i'd like a can you ask the question differently what what do we mean by differential privacy privacy yeah kind of yeah i'll wait for the question coming around but uh talking of that uh denise uh we have another question uh yeah. linkedin user i guess it's the same one how would one uh one tune and custom train the models uh, on custom data set including program no no, no. let's answer the one on uh, differential uh, privacy all right <laughs> all right so, yes so what he means by yes what are views about differential privacy it's a prerequisite mm -hmm. differential privacy means you're going to keep some data public and some data okay. private now if you keep some data public and some data private. Let's suppose I, I train the transformers with all that private data on your profiles and all that. And then publicly, I only give you part of the information. I would say that legally you're in trouble. That's what I'm saying. You're, you're respecting the fact that you're not showing data, yeah. but you're not in a legal position because you're using private data to make a lot, make a lot of calculations and you're not take, telling the user. Now, uh you have uh, grpd in in europe which forbids this you have yeah. to explain it that's where explainable ai comes in so i wanted to answer differential yeah. privacy it, it, is, is it's a two-sided uh it's two-sided yeah completely understand uh denise one question from my end uh in your opinion what are the soft skills that every ai especially uh ai specialist would, uh, should sharpen what do you think about it about the soft skills which soft skills would the person need? Yeah, for like any AI specialist would need. Okay, now, to tell the truth, uh, I believe in cognitive science. I believe mm -hmm. that if you take your time and you read about uh, linguistics, for example, if you're doing natural language processing, it would be nice to, to read a bit about linguistics. But if you want to use your transformers on social media, you might want to read some sociology. If mm -hmm. you want to have uh, user experience, then you might want to do some psychology. Then if you want to understand how people react, you want to have to look at some neuroscience. Then yeah. if you want to model that, you want to do maybe math. But then if you want to show complexity in networks, you might want to do some graph graph theory. So I would say it's very important. The, that's why the word soft for me is key. Right. The, the, the more educated you are, because mm -hmm. see, you're learning math, but la math is a language. Suppose I told mm -hmm. you, oh, you're six years old now, you can read and write, you're done. No, now you have <laughs> to write dissertations. Now you have to read books. So math is only a language. What are you, what are you doing with it? And artificial mm -hmm. intelligence algorithms are just another language, but now you're going to have to invent things. And if you want to invent pipelines or innovate, then you have to widen your culture. Now, the best way to do that is in, to get into a multicultural team with cross-disciplinary people that say, you know, from a psychological point of view, your application is this zero it's worth nothing so work right. with other people read books and don't and, and these are hard skills <laughs> and yeah. for the future. if you want yeah. to survive decades if you want to survive decades in artificial intelligence you'll need a minimum of all of that awesome sounds very insightful thanks for that uh there was a funny comment from scott uh, i think that privacy questions come from a linkedin user <laughs> 
about different yeah, yeah. The, the LinkedIn user w was doing yeah uh, w was doing differential privacy <laughs> he was asking a question but hiding his name <laughs> exactly okay we have an interesting question from Amrit uh, uh, with size of transformer models uh, getting bigger and doing well on various language uh, benchmarks how do we use them for real inferencing real -time? okay so now Amrit you, you you hit a very interesting subject because from chapter one in my book, how oh, I speak about the Google transform. Then chapter two in my yeah. book, I go to the BERT models and we build them up to 24 layers. I skip a few chapters, I get to chapter six and you have these GPT models up there with 96 layers and they trained it using 10,000 GPUs 30,000 CPUs on a $10 million uh, machine. And then they tell, they say, oh, you know, I'm sorry, but you won't be able to train your own GPT. You're going to have to pay as you go on Microsoft. But then, Emmerich, are you going to worry about the size or about the teacher? Let me give you an example. You go into a class, you go, we've all went to school, and, and we have, we really like this subject. We're really passionate maybe about history. We love history. At home, our parents talked about history, history of everything. We're, we're good at history. But then we get to class, we have this bad teacher. So mm -hmm. we have this super model. We're the transformer model. We have this huge transformer model that we are because we can take so much. But the teacher, he's so bad, we're not learning anything. For one year, I've learned nothing. So what I'm saying is in chapter six, if you go to chapter six, I begin with pattern uh, extracting, uh, a pattern extracting method where there's this person called Tom Sheik. It's very interesting. You should go to chapter six of the book and you will see this German uh, PhD student. He says, he goes, I don't have all the money, friends. I don't have the money to go and buy this supercomputer. And I don't have the, I don't want to build this enormous model because I don't even know how it works. So I'm going to take a small model. I'm going to take an average student in a class, but I'm going to be an excellent teacher. So maybe that if you're in a class where you're super good with a bad teacher, but maybe in the next class you have an average student with a super teacher, he'll learn, he'll learn more than you. So what Tom Schick did, he's invented this training method on a very small BERT-like model. And you know what? He's on the super glue leaderboard around 12th position. And he's often, it keeps going up and down, but he's often before Microsoft and other big corporations. And he did it on a little uh, computer like we have. So I would say, Amrik, think of the data you're sending into it. Look at chapter two in my book, chapter three in my book, where I took things and customized my data set. Then go to chapter six and look what Tom Schick did. So then you can have a balance between am I going to go get a, a $10 million supercomputer or am I going to learn to be a better teacher? Mm -hmm. Sounds very interesting. I'm sure that uh, answered Amrit's question. Uh, we have an interesting question from Ruben. Hi, Ruben. Uh, hi, Denise. Uh, uh, what's your advice on homomorphic uh, machine learning and data privacy? So data privacy seems to be coming up pretty often. Yes. Data, <laughs> data processing is is really it's it's a problem because uh, data process I'd say privacy doesn't exist anymore. So mm -hmm. if you're talking about like uh, homomorphic uh, encryption or things like that. Uh, it's not going to work. I think uh, because I'll tell you something. I'll, I'll tell you about privacy. I often meet somebody, uh, Ruben, I'll tell you it this way. Ivan, Ivan, I don't know if it's Ivan, Ruben, Ruben, Ivan, but anyway, Ivan, Ruben. Let's tell you, I meet people and I say, do you have an account on Facebook? And the person says, ha, 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 I am not on Facebook. I am not on Twitter. I don't go to YouTube. I buy my newspaper in a shop. So ha, ha, you don't know anything about me. So that's privacy. That's 100% privacy. But then you get these ghost profiles. 
because this is what happens. You go to a website once to get a cooking recipe. When you go to the cooking recipe, then you have to click on your privacy. If you click on it, then you have to say refuse, 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 right. partners. It, it takes you, I do it every time because I just love to look at all these people getting my information and I like to frustrate them by saying I refuse, I refuse. But not everyone's crazy like me. So once in a time you said, okay, but then look who owns these things. Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, they're the one picking the information up. Mm -hmm. So they know that you went to, you went and you went to a cooking rest, you made a cooking rest, so you like cooking. Then they saw you go watch a picture of an actor that is only, you know, an actor in action movies. Ah, okay. Then you went somewhere else and they have that information. Then in Facebook, there are people that you know that are on Facebook and they have all the contacts and you're in the contacts. So now I need to do is K means clustering on Facebook and I'll, I'll take all these contacts and I'll find you among several contacts and I'll put you together mm -hmm. the profiles of these other people. And if I'm lucky, I might find a picture of you. And if I find a picture yeah. of you and you're not on Facebook, then I'm going to begin to know who you are. So I think that direct profit privacy is controlled legally today in Europe and in the United States increasingly, <laughs> but real privacy doesn't exist. So, uh, and private machine learning, it's, it's the same since I can, I can deduct anything from anything. And I did that uh, in my first book on artificial intelligence, just going through the movies someone's watching, you can know who that person is. If you go on Netflix has the most powerful one. If you watch movies on Netflix, they use a restricted Boltzmann machine and other things, they get all the features. And it's not just tags like action, no. It's inside the personality of the actors, who they are, True. what they do in life. Uh, it goes very, very far. So yeah. Ivan, I think, uh, I think we're trying to control it, but uh, I think it's out of control, unfortunately. <laughs> or fortunately, I don't know. Aisha says, oh, same here, good strategy, everyone says. It's, we can't avoid on, Saima says, we can't avoid on Google. Yeah, okay. why would we avoid Google? It's like saying, uh, you know what? I'm not going to go to the center of Paris anymore <laughs> because there are video cameras everywhere. Because if you go to the subway, in the subway station in Paris, there are cameras everywhere and you're, you're filmed. Mm -hmm. So right. I'm not going to go in the street anymore, there are cameras. No, I'm not going into that shop because there are cameras. I'm not going on Google because Google knows what I'm searching for. I'm not going to school. I'm not going to school because in some schools there are these video cameras in the streets. I'm not going to talk to my teacher because he's using Excel on his Google Drive with my name on it. In Google, I use robots, bots to read the data in there and do things. I'm not going to write an email because in Gmail it's written that but. So you can go in the middle of the woods and uh you can live on roots but that's the way it is sounds good uh another interesting question from youtube lambert um, uh, do you see the large models to become universal usable out of the box for all applications or do you see emergence of field specific or language specific models yeah so lambert you just brought up one of the the biggest subjects going on for the past 70 years is artificial general intelligence. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, and that comes from Turing's people are still in the Turing test uh, era, you know, in their mind. So, and people say a Turing test is when you can't see the difference between a machine and a human when it speaks to you. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but on social media, they, they don't, these uh, algorithms don't speak to you at all. You don't even know they're there. They're just doing a lot of work on backstage. So okay. I personally, I don't think it's, uh, the GP2 model says it's zero shot. Once you train it, it can do all the NLP tasks, but it's not true because I did some, I ran some tests. So if you take like, uh, suppose you're working, let's take a precise thing. You're working in a law firm. Okay, with lawyers. And if you make a mistake and that lawyer goes to court and he he loses $50 million, you know where you go? To prison. Okay, <laughs> because you might 
have sent someone to prison because you made a mistake. So when we're speaking about specialized things like, like that, we need special applications. Also in legal terms, in the United States, for example, we can go back to the, or in England, you can go back to the Magna Carta. That's 800 years ago in Old English. There is no, they're not in the tokenized, I, I, in chapter seven of my book, I take data sets and I take to tokenizers and I show that these words do not exist. But then mm -hmm. some of these transformer models just try to invent something that doesn't go with it. So the limit I would say is for specialized things, you have to do custom things and you might even have to add rule bases to make sure, double check, that's a good answer. So I would say, take the word universal out of there and let's try to do some very good specific applications for our customers first. Then we'll speak about that in a hundred years. <laughs> Very now, insightful. There, 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 there's, a, there's an epilogue to that, Lambert. Can you find a human being on this planet can do everything? Oh, because people saying oh, artificial general intelligence, but how intelligent are you? Are you good in math, history, geography, uh, medical care? Everything. So you're good in everything. So you want a machine to be as good as you? Well, don't worry. All these machines are better than you already. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Agreed. Uh, okay. Uh, this was an interesting question from Paul Vikas. Uh, in the last few years, we are often hearing about uh, like uh, wo hearing words like AI, NLP, etc. And many institutions are training thousands of people every month where we may exceed the demand by supply what practically but practically what is the scenario in the real world what do you think Denise? well uh, i'll give you a couple of real life examples uh mm -hmm. a few months ago i was working for a world a big world corporation one of the leading consulting corporations in the world with the leading artificial intelligence consultants and i was in the i was beginning uh, a little session like this one. And I was talking to a person like Rabbit 10, minute bef 10 minutes before. And as yeah. Rabbit knows, I, I, asked a lot of, I ask a lot of uh, personal uh, questions. I'm intrusive. <laughs> uh, yes. I tell the guy, what, what degrees do you have? And he, and he tells me, wow, I have this degree. I say, wow, that's awesome. But what kind of artificial intelligence are you doing in your company right now? Well, I'm doing Excel sheets because uh, I just started and they're asking me, uh, to do reports or reporting and all that. So Paul, there is a problem right now that hype has brought many people to artificial intelligence, but then when they enter a corporation, first you have to, the people have to understand what artificial intelligence is for hey. and where it can be useful and, and, and will it really help and how long does it take to do something, especially in NLP. So what I would say, Paul, is you can do simple things like you can do simple bots like when you hear like you, when you go to support lines today you hear simple questions do you want to do this do you want to do that i would say start with simple chat bots in nlp simple tasks that and make people help you know they, they they save some time they wanted to reach someone they've been trying to contact someone for three days well maybe this person can have a little knowledge base you know for simple questions where should I go to ask this for that? And when the person calls, press one for this, press one for that. Oh, you should just call uh, this supplier and that. So do little things, little helpful things that it will assist people. But don't try to do what you see in books because it'll take you years and that costs too much. Do very quick wins, very simple quick wins. But, uh, but you're right. Uh, most people still don't understand uh, what it's for. But not in every case. If you go to the military, which we won't speak about mm -hmm. in this uh, podcast, because I wanted to stay alive for at least 24 hours. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> when you take the military, that's a prerequisite. You take aerospace. Mm -hmm. There are some fields where AI is prerequisite. But then if you go to a manufacturer who's making, uh, who's, you know, uh, bread, for example, industrial bread, he said, what do you you know, I take the wheat, I put it there. Uh, what do you want me to do AI for? You know, you okay? So there are there are places, believe me, where it's a prerequisite, but you don't hear about it. And then there are other places where you don't really need it, but you can do simple good things. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, interesting question from uh, Robin. 
uh, from YouTube. What's your view on combining bidirectional RNNs and transformers? Recent work from Amazon shows that uh, these two models architectures could be complementary. I don't believe it. <laughs> I believe that uh, bidirection, you know, you know what it reminds me, they have to write things, you know, they have to write stuff and they're testing stuff all the time. Let me put it another yeah. way. Let's suppose I come you, there's this, there was this show called Starsky and Hutch uh, 50 years mm -hmm. ago with, suppose I take a Ford 1960 and I tell you, Robin, I want to, no, let's take a Ferrari 1960. Let's take a very nice car. An, R, an RNN in 1980 was a very, so I'm taking Robin, I'm taking a 1960 Ferrari. I mean, that's a beautiful mm -hmm. car. It's worth a lot of money. Now I'm taking a 2021 Ferrari, super speed, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in three seconds. You can go at 400 kilometers an hour with uh, 500 horsepower or Lamborghini. And you say, you know, what if I took that 1960 uh, Ferrari and I put an engine of a recent Ferrari in it? I'm going to tell you, what about the brakes? What about the wheels? What about the whole car body so what they're trying to do is do something they're trying to do something but i don't but an rnn in my in my opinion is it, it, just it's, it's just an experiment because in transformers you already have uh deberts which separate things like rnns were done i would say rnns are gone but if someone wants because there's another problem robin is the architecture when you're talking Remember I told you the transformers are Legos. You have these building blocks. They're all the same. You can't do that with an RNN. It's a, I don't believe in it. Okay. But what I would say, test it. But if you're testing, but test it with the best transformers. And I, and, and I don't believe, and, and there's one way to do it. Go on the super glue leaderboard and find one of these. You won't find it. You only find transformers. You won't find RNNs anymore. But you can do vintage. You can listen to vinyl, uh, these old vinyl records. You can still listen to CDs instead of listening to uh, to Spotify. You know, you can watch black and white TV and not color TV. Or, or you can try to put, uh, you can paint, uh, you can try to paint a black and white TV with color with, uh, with uh, markers. Uh, I don't believe it. Maybe, we'll see, but I don't believe it. <laughs> Very interesting, uh, Denise. We have another question quite some time I've been. Yeah, from Pinaki Mishra. Where can I use transformer NLP instead of uh, traditional method? Also, transformers took uh, lots of resources to productionize and scaling. What are your thoughts? Well, you're right, because Pinaki, sometimes I've found that, uh, suppose we're doing some very simple things in a, in a company. Someone calls, and the person wants uh, to 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 for to buy something, to sell something. In fact, you wouldn't even need NLP algorithms. You could do it with a rule base. You could just scan the sentence, and you find purchase. Then you direct the person to somewhere, and you find sell. So if you you could do search in sentences with the rule bases, and reach some very good results, and you can do. Uh, some consign, uh, cosine similarity and, and get a very good result with no artificial intelligence at all. So it, it, it depends on what you're doing. Now I'll take you to the other end. I'm going to give you 10 billion posts to read over 10 days at Facebook. Zuckerberg comes up mm -hmm. and says, no, uh, Pinnicky, there's something going on there. I don't, people keep complaining about some of these posts. Which one are they? What are they complaining about? Because people are just looking at one post. I don't know. I, I hear complaints all the time. Uh, I, was, <laughs> I was in Hawaii surfing, and then these people come up and blame me for any. What's going on? Pineki, can you tell me? He said, well, traditional methods. Well, how long will it take you? Oh, 10 years? Okay, so can you go a bit faster? Because uh, this, I have a Senate hearing, and they keep asking me questions. I don't even know the answers, okay? Because people think when he goes to the Senate hearings, he doesn't answer the questions. They think he's doing it on purpose. He isn't. He's having a nice life. He's relying on these automatic programs. So 
Transformers are the only thing that will solve that problem because they learn so fast. And no matter, they don't have to worry about the cost. They have to worry about the result. Because if I have one post today and tomorrow said, hey, Zuckerberg, someone said something bad there on uh, Facebook and it's going all over the place. What are you talking about? I don't know. It's in a language I don't understand. I'm, uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't even know what language it is. Okay, so you'll need transformers. See what I mean? For simple things, you don't. For big things, you're going to need them. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks, uh, Denise, for that one. Quick question from uh, George, obviously. On, uh, Denise, did you get a chance to play with GPT as of now? Yeah, I, I, got, a, I got a chance to play with GPT-3 just before wow. they, they switched it off. At one point, okay. <laughs> we almost had access to it because I was watching every day. So, yeah. but the thing is, if you go to chapter six, uh, George, if you go to chapter six of my book and you read about PET, P E T, the patent and extracting uh, technique there, you can see mm -hmm. that the Tom Schick that used a good training method exceeded the performance at one time of GPT 3 on the Super Blue leaderboard. So right. what I'm saying is GP3, GPT-3 is not the ultimate thing. It goes back to what I'm saying. Who's the teacher? So these guys are trying to do these super special, super things, but you can train your a smaller system to do better. So GP3, GPT-3 is one model. You're going to have GPT-4. You're going to have another BERT. It's, it's like cars. Think, think of these transformer models like cars. Every, every few months, you'll have a new car. Like you'll have this and you'll have that. And that one's better than this because, you know, you have the full options and all. But don't believe any of it, of course. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Uh, uh, talking about the book, uh, obviously, there's been quite some noise about the book. Uh, Denise, uh, Francis just bought your book. Uh, for the viewers, I would just let them know where they can actually uh, find their book. Uh, so just to give them a quick view. Here is where you can find Denise's book. It's already the number one release in CNN. All right. So, yes, you can find it on Amazon. Denise, uh, how can they reach out to you? Uh, LinkedIn. If they have any questions? LinkedIn. When you LinkedIn? have questions, just go to LinkedIn and ask me questions. I'm always glad to ask questions, answer them, because it gets awesome. me thinking. Every time someone asks me a question, I'm saying, hmm, that's interesting. Like Just like in this uh, conversation. It gets my mind. Uh, it gives me a perspective. It's very interesting. So I, I do ask questions. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Talking of questions, uh, Denise, uh, I'll just be taking a few more questions. Just, you know, we are uh, close to wrapping up. It's almost 57 minutes. But uh, Denise, uh, you know, someone just in the question, I'm just trying to scroll around. But uh, someone just asked, when are you uh, writing your next book? <laughs> You have to ask Tushar Gupta. He's the visionary. So reach out to Tushar Gupta from... You find, you find Tushar Gupta on LinkedIn. The thing is, um, to go back to Tushar Gupta, uh, mm -hmm. Pact is the editor, okay? And Pact tries to get books that are useful for developers. So they're not going to ask me to write the 15th book on the same subject. So what Tushar Gupta does, he said, Dennis... Like, there's no book on Transformers, and uh, I know that you like these challenges, so why don't we write this book to help people? And the same happened for Explainable AI. When I wrote that book, there were practically no books on Explainable AI. I had no references. So Tushar Gupta is the visionary. So when he sees something and he says, you know, there are no books on that subject, we need to write something on that. And he knows I like, and I, so he's the one you want to talk to. And you can go through Rabbit. You can say, Rabbit, go ask Tushar what he thinks. Yes. So this is the book we are talking about, like the explainable. Yes. Uh, Tushar ask came up and said, you know, people don't realize it. It's Tushar's idea. He said, people don't realize it, but users need to understand explainable AI. And uh, it's important for them to understand it. And so write a book on it. So we talk about it. And uh, it's, it's teamwork. Like you're, you think you're talking to an author, but in fact, you're talking to a team. Uh, you have uh, Rabbit, who's talking to a lot of people, Tushar, uh, and there are a lot of other people involved, like Monica. 
and and they feel the market they 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 are close to the developers and they say ah that book is missing we have to do that book mm. I'm and just the, I'm just the author I I, I do the legwork <laughs> I write the content ah uh, but then he says the mastermind be in writing books and he is the uh, the best one of the best authors i have worked with and yeah days before we uh, you know uh, wrap this up i have one quick question from neerat satpal uh, the the work you are doing on transformers is so exciting denise rothman uh, question is how to train such a beast okay <laughs> so what what i would do is i i like to have fun since it's one of the last questions so if you go to chapter 3 of my book when i was writing this chapter i was saying i was asking myself quite my that question how am i going to train this transformer and i was saying i'm going to train it to do what i like so what i did is you'll see it in chapter 3 i i i took the works of manuel kant kant is a german uh philosopher and his reputation is being one of the most difficult books to read so i said hmm that's interesting why don't i take his works so i took all i went on a, a site and i the gutenberg uh, project and which we get free books so you get free books mm -hmm. and i put all these free books i just copied them in a file i sent an email to the gutenberg project to say what i was doing and say hey no problem go ahead so i got the legal authorization and then my tokenizer built a dictionary it built a dictionary using all the words of manuel kant over several books and then i looked and i say wow that's interesting so now it learned now let me ask him a question so then i trained it in a very simple way of course i would have to train it more but i trained a little model and i asked him what do humans do uh, i just wanted to ask him what humans do what do humans do and uh so i was talking to this philosopher 300 300 years back and i said what do humans do and he answers me and he says uh well humans need thinking they need consciousness i got all sorts of interesting answers so what you want to do <laughs> to train it is have fun start having fun go get your favorite stuff go get harry potter get anything you like take chapter 3 and replace it by things you like and then ask it ask it to do things you like and have fun with it and while you do that like you play you know play is to learn small animals yeah. learn lions learn by playing cats learn by playing and with playing and having fun little by little ah you'll see ah yeah, i need to train it more i need to you'll get into it but have fun that's the main thing if you do have fun i mean this period is so depressing and boring if you don't have fun i mean wow so <laughs> have so fun true. That's thank you very three. much That's chapter 3 Denise thank you very much it was amazing to have you in the show everyone around That was amazing and, to be with you uh denise there were many questions uh, which obviously we couldn't take but uh, obviously uh, you can go back have a look in you know you can share your experiences your insights uh, and also uh, definitely we'll be uh, uh, we have uh, denise i'm asking you to go back uh, just because uh, no one misses on the chance to uh, win your book obviously so we can announce it next week uh, for the best questions asked and uh, everyone definitely asked some amazing and questions but this is the book this. book by pack <laughs> by pack now <laughs> thank you very much denise again uh, thank you everyone for joining in take care have a nice weekend yeah